start now, Adventure, or you you'll give me uh, a let me introduce you, right? Ah, um, okay, okay, yeah, sure. Or, or maybe Rocco can do it. No, if you're letting people in, we will we'll wait. Wait. Uh, I just wanted to yeah. ask how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, everyone, uh, welcome. Thank you all for joining us for this third day, uh, third round of non standard philosophy, uh, Laruel and the Kyoto School. So, um, really, we had a good run for two days. We had a lot of attendance, a lot of questions. We'll try to address a lot of that today during the round table. And uh, today uh, we have three more presenters Then we'll have a, a big break. Let's see how, how we do with time and then uh, have the round, round table at the end. So today I will begin uh, with a presentation by Katarina Kolozova, who is a director of the Institute Institute of Gender Studies in Skopje. No, 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 no. That was a long time ago. Oh, my apologies. <laughs> I, I still thought like the affiliation was... <laughs> no. Okay, so... What, even what back is, then, what it was not gender studies. It's Institute of Social Sciences and Humanities. Mm -hmm. I can present myself, uh, okay, to, to keep things simple. Uh, I, I teach uh, there and run the, the institute uh, full time. I also teach at the uh, doctoral studies program uh, at the American University in Skopje and the critical political studies in uh, Belgrade in Serbia, where I teach uh, political philosophy. That's basically it. I still teach gender studies in, in some way. Uh, and uh, epistemology as I used to uh, in the past. I've published a couple of books, uh, uh, The Cut of the Real Subjectivity in Post-Structuralist Philosophy with Columbia University Press. Uh, that, that was in 2014, um, where I kind of juxtapose Laurel to the post-structuralist, especially in feminist philosophy. Maybe that's why you presented me as somebody running the Gender Studies Institute. Uh, then uh, I had with Punctum Books with, uh, in Brooklyn, uh, New York, I had published a book called Toward uh, Radical Metaphysics of Socialism, Marx and uh, Laurel, and the latest book, uh, The Holocaust of, of the Animals, it's on uh, uh, basically what I will be talking about uh, uh, in this paper in, in, in some short version of it, but it's a critique of philosophy of capitalism and of patriarchy uh, through a, a constellation of thinkers uh, that are uh, Laurel, of course, uh, Marx, uh, Saussure, um, Donna Haraway and Liz Irigar uh, of the feminists, so, and Zon Rettel and Wittgenstein, so it's a, it's a whole uh, bunch of people, but that, th these are mainly the, 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 the key references there. Um, in that book I attempt something I call uh, uh, formalism of uh, materiality of formalism or materialist formalism extracted from all of the uh, proposals I make there in uh, the book. Uh, and I'll be uh, reading uh, basically, um, uh, as I said, the reshuffled, re-scrambled version of uh, that chapter where I, um, sought to identify uh, consonances with uh, Karatani's uh, thesis and his uh, reading of uh, Marx, which seems uh, very close to what comes out uh, to be the argument here where all of these thinkers I talked about uh, uh, combined yield certain results, give us uh, a certain new, uh, offer us certain new avenues of thought. So this entire combination uh, establishes uh, an important significant consonance with uh, what Karatani had to say in his book uh, on uh, Marx uh, toward the center of uh, possibility. So uh, let me 
start because I don't have much time. Um, uh, so uh, after having presented the notion of the radical diet and so on and so forth, uh, I'm arriving at this attempt to establish a certain form uh, materialist formalism. Uh, with this audience here, I don't have to explain the, the, the main premises or the terminology um, as I normally have to elsewhere. So I'll just try to start presenting the, the, the argument around formalism. Uh, um, okay, so uh, Marx's study, uh, we begin with Marx. Marx's study of the species being of humanity uh, institutes itself as a science that deals with value production and the relation of value to material reality. Uh, you can notice here uh, uh, this uh, um, coincidence resonance with the, 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 the uh, a resonance with the reading of uh, Karatani who also insists that uh, behind the entire political e economic argument and mainly the economic argument lies a discussion around the notion of value that uh, could be defined as a question of metaphysical nature. What I propose here is that, you know, uh, that we uh, approach uh, the metaphysical quandaries that move our, uh, our discussion, uh, generate discussions in a manner that is scientific and this notion of scientific is basically miming um, Laurel's uh, posture of uh, scientific posture of uh, thought. Uh, further on, I establish a, a, a similarity between this proposal of Laurel's and Wittgenstein's notion of Maßstab, but I don't think we'll have the time to, to reach that point in the presentation. Um, so uh, this is obviously, uh, referring here to the value, uh, the study of uh, value, value production as something that is the, the core of uh, Marx's um, analysis and the relation of value to material reality. So this very question is obviously a metaphysical question, but the suggested approach here is scientific, as I said, therefore, the science to be established in line with Marx's precept ought to operate with philosophical material, but in a non-philosophical way. Leroyal has furnished a rich conceptual apparatus, at once lexicological and methodological, to make this type of science possible. So the post-philosophical or uh, non-philosophical Marxian approach, uh, I suggest here, uh, consists in the complete formalization of the question and the language to pursue this science. My argument here is that uh, the formalization we can talk about considering we are dealing with uh, nature uh, or we, we have to tackle the question of physicality, for example, and uh, that implies that uh, em empirical uh, basis ought to be somehow considered, that formalism would be more uh, like the one developed uh, within the study of language, for example, structuralism, but of course, not exactly that, nor miming it. Uh, but in fact, find a certain, again, posture, I would say, of thought uh, that could be uh, established, uh, established a mimesis of while arriving at something uh, completely uh, else. I hope I'll, I'll, I'll have the time to present what that else is. Um, so this kind of approach should treat the material at hand. So 
including the conceptual material originating in philosophy as material and as matter, if you will, along the vector from the concrete to the abstract. I'm quoting here Saussure, his general co course on lingu linguistics, but you might remember this phrase from Marx as well. Even though in him we depart from the abstraction, but in the sense of abandoning the philosophical abstractions, ones that Laurel would say are founded on the principle of uh, philosophical sufficiency, arrive at the concrete that constitutes them and then extract um, an, ab an abstract formula uh, out of it. So uh, that's uh, in a different and longer way said in uh, Grundrisse, but this succinct formulation uh, from the concrete to the abstract that we find in Saussure is precisely what the Marx talks there in Grund, Grund uh, about in Grundrisse. Uh, so uh, it uh, th this was of course a digression, uh, a, a side remark uh, while I was talking. Um, going back to the paper, I'm saying here that uh, we can see not just. Uh, we are not. Uh, we do not need to only be aware of this claim of Marx and Grundrisse, but we can see that such a procedure is undertaken in Marx's uh, capital. So, a, a, a trajectory of this kind is undertaken in, in Marx's capital, in which an exact understanding of the concrete, the description of empirical data and the explication of its patterns leads to discoveries about the laws that govern the exchange of goods or the market more generally and ultimately to the abstractions of commodity. So this is the trajectory in capital. It starts from the very, very boring descriptive details of the concrete. And this uh, discussion, uh, the more formal, the more rigorous, the more it leads to abstractions at the level of formulae that, that we know uh, of in, in Marx's texts, not, not just the MCM or M to M prime for a formula, but you know, uh, the others we find in uh, the, the more economic ones we find in the third volume of Capital. So the examination and problematization of the relation between material, the material and the abstract between use value and exchange value, nonetheless requires the mobilization of philosophical material. The problem of the tautology value, reproducing value. So uh, I keep uh, a kind of reestablishing throughout this analysis, the problem of tautology, uh, of value, reproducing value as uh, something that uh, keeps uh, the economic reasoning of capitalism uh, within the same a uh, structure of reasoning or economy of reason that is perfectly analogous to that of philosophy as understood uh, uh, by uh, Leroy, uh based on the principle of philosophical sufficiency. Um, so, uh, and this is, if you remember, the problem of and with philosophy as such, uh, as identified by Wittgenstein. Uh, the impasse of tautological uh, statements. But unlike what uh, Wittgenstein proposes here with Marx, with Laurel, with Karatani, 
uh, coming to your aid, we can establish a certain uh, formalism of materialist thought. I would uh, suggest uh, this is what I tried to do here. So returning to the problem of the tautology of value reproducing value. And if you remember, there is a formula for that in uh, Marx. Uh, he, uh, he argues that we've got this MCM money commodity man, money formula, uh, which then when auto accelerated because capital accelerated itself constantly by its very own nature, uh, expunges the seed, the, 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 the commodity, whatever is left of materiality and uh, uh, stays with uh, the purely tautological formula of M to M prime. So uh, M, C, M turns to M to M prime, you know this famous uh, quote from uh, Marx. Uh, so um, in, a, in a way referring to this, not in a way, this is uh, basically the argument. Of course, it's far more complex, but uh, I'm invoking this formula simply to, to remind you of um, what I'm talking about here. And this is uh, Karatani's uh, argument one through uh throughout his uh book that is why he also karatani also establishes um uh, an analogy uh and not only an analogy but puts forward the proposal to study the the problem of value exchange uh, in marxian terms by way of using the means of structuralist linguistics and Saussure's study of language. So uh, uh, there is this overlapping between the two texts uh, or the several texts I discuss here and Karatani as well. So the problem of the tautology of value reproducing value, the detachment of the automaton of the market from the physical reality of the commodity of whatever mere use is. So this detachment of value producing value and trumping physical reality, which does not necessarily have to mean just biology. It can be also a, a physical a object that is produced through human labor but it's canceled in its aspect of physicality and it's rendered relevant to the capitalist uh, economy only in its aspect of uh, surp surplus value or pure value. Um, I'm sorry, a slight disturbance. Okay, everything is calm now. The, the kid and the dog appear in the room, but ignore them. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll continue. So the problem of the tautology of value reproducing value, the detachment of the automaton of the market from the physical reality, I just explained which one, is a metaphysical question, obviously. Um, what is value, pure value versus the physical? That cannot be anything but, uh, you know, a metaphysical question. It can be a philosophical question, but it's never read of metaphysics. Uh, and my proposal here is that, uh, you know, just like science deals with metaphysical questions, basically, um, you know, the same kind of question, value versus physical reality could be a purely scientific question of, I don't know, uh, economy of the, uh, you can f frame it, especially in studies of technology and life sciences and so on. There are aspects of this uh, quandary that, that are necessarily tackled. And 
uh, what this question moves is science, not philosophy. So my proposal is uh, to radicalize this core. That was the proposal in the book I mentioned, I published in 2015 and kind of trying to try to read uh, the discussion of the principle of philosophical sufficiency and keep them at the physical core if possible. Uh, anyway, so the proposal is that uh, this kind of a metaphysical question, uh, it should be radicalized, treated as material or real, if you will, or as a real abstraction, as Zon Reto would say, the Marxian epistemologist. So instead of discounting metaphysics, one could formalize the language of inquiry, inquiry while abandoning the principle of philosophical circularity and self-sufficiency. Uh, here, I would uh, add a quote from uh, Ratane, again from Towards the Center of Possibility, Marx towards the center of possibility, where he says, in this sense, structuralism is foreclosed into the binary of signifier and signified, or in another sense, culture and nature. So it remains in the domain of metaphysics. Insofar as Marx thought within the binary of use value and value, he remains inside the metaphysics of money. So the, 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 there is this uh, you know, comfortable use of the question of metaphysics and it's not, um, and it does not again go against uh, the ambition to produce a discourse that would be scientific. Uh, in Karatani as well, that's my uh, point here, and um, and that uh, and I made a similar point as I said in that book from 2015 and here as well. So formaliz formalization does not necessarily formalization uh, of uh, the inquiry uh, does not necessarily imply computing. Now I'm talking here about computing because I constantly comparatively discuss in the book uh, artificial and natural, natural uh, languages. So formalization does not necessarily imply computing or a close, closed automation. Um, just like structuralism and Marxism, the prospective formal languages of post philosophy I propose here, relying on the methodological model provided by Leroyalian non-philosophy, allow for poesy while being scientifically rigorous. This is due to the fact that they permit and acknowledge the remainder that escapes signification. And signification, I keep arguing that, is always an automaton. Um, in say Aristotelian Lacanian sense, you know, the automaton of uh, signification of sign making, um, and that is this is more or less how you know language is studied basically by uh, the Saussure, uh, except it's you know uh, a closed and finite. Uh, uh, automaton get infinity, infinite. It's very similar to the principle of the finite and the infinite in uh, Turing, by the way, but there is no time to discuss that comparison. So having commenced with the concrete, computer languages, for example, but also for serious phonology, uh, but let's uh, stick to computer languages because they are the formal uh, language, one with which we would not dispute as one might dispute the natural 
a language of, you know, being also a kind of, you know, uh, based on formula, uh, be, being an automaton itself. Still, that's different from formal. Formal, uh, that can be also, you know, a manifest folk image of reality, you know, the, the uh, what's missing there, even though that kind of language is uh, uh, in the realm of natural languages, is also an automaton. What misses there to make it scientific is precisely the formalization. Uh, the kind of an attenuation of uh, the empirical material one discusses in order to extract uh, the translucent abstract and thus arrived at the formal. So, uh, but in computer languages, we, we, we begin with that. And uh, so it's more easier to make the argument through them. So having commenced with the concrete, computer languages go from the abstract, just like in Grund Rize, if you remember, from the abstract, to the concrete, but also from the complex to the simple. So it has to be simplified. That is the trajectory um, in order to then arrive again at complexity. So this is a form of signification. And, and this is how languages mainly operate. So it is, uh, uh, or the automata, of signification, whether natural languages, whether uh, a value exchange as discussed by Marx uh, or artificial languages, uh, this interesting uh, dynamics as discussed by Yuk Hui and his uh, uh, book on recursivity and contingency. So, that is why it would be an erroneous, erroneous fetishization uh, to treat it as a product of mathematics only, even though it's, you know, present there, math is present there, but it's what Turing call, calls, calls the efficient math, if you remember. So this fetishization of mathematics beyond the efficient math that Turing uh, argues for, uh, leads to a strange mystification of the operation. It is perceived as the product of pure rationality. We are opposing to this pure rationalism, a materialism um, of, uh, uh, no, a formalism, a, a materialist formalism, or formalization of materialism, or, materialist uh, 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 formalization again. Yeah, I'm repeating myself. Anyway, so uh, juxtaposed to this, we, we have the phenomenon of pure rationality uh, and this uh, mystification of the presence of math in computing uh, as you know as if the presence or material materialization of the spirit of pure rationality and pure math uh, at the center of computing no computing is a pretty you know mechanical and also grounded in into matter things thing uh, not only you know in the terms of physical support that enables it but the process of signification itself uh, begins with something very simple and very mechanical and then expands uh, to the complexities um, we spontaneously imagine. Same with language, if you remember and to see his uh, discussion of uh, language. Uh, so pure rationality in this sense is a philosophical fetish par excellence for two reasons. First, the physiologically determined cognitive and physical reality is transformed into a self-sufficient transcendental quasi-entity, an ontologized agency, the reason, pursuing a goal moved by the causa finalis of its own self-realization in the form of an intelligent and rational universe 
whereby an equation between what is real and what is true is established. So you can see this reasoning is philosophical in the way problematized by Leroy. Second method of inquiry, inquiry is ontologized. So a simple cognitive algorithm, let's put it that way, is ontologized through uh, uh, the putting at the center of the value of, you know, uh, pure reason or uh, reason or pure rationality. So it is ontologized and transformed into a substance, the reason, the spirit in Hegel, that is superior, a substance that is superior to all substances and certainly to what is deemed material. Thus, the boundary that separated but also connected theology and philosophy is re-established and reaffirmed. The reign of pure reason is structurally identical to the reign of the monotheistic God. So computer science, for example, but the other forms of uh, languages, uh, computer computing, and the other form of languages, and sciences of these languages, including computer sciences, neither reducible to mathematical reason as pure reason, substantivized as pure reason, rendered usia, nor is the latter reducible to the philosophical understanding of reason as pure and as an eschatological goal. Computer science and the tasks uh, tasks of automating, uh, automated signification are both linked to and determined by also the physical support uh, uh, in addition to the mechanicity of uh, construing signification. So I have not even arrived at the example of how this uh, formalized materialism looks like, but I presented the main thesis, I think, and I've let, left only five minutes for discussion, right? I'll stop here because if I continue, I'll leave no time for discussion. Or if there are, any, uh, if there are no questions, I, I, I can simply continue. Whatever works. Yeah, let's open the floor and see if there are comments or questions. All right, Thomas, okay. you can go ahead. I can go ahead or somebody else? Uh, there is a, a person, Thomas. Ah, okay. Raise the hand, Thomas, go ahead. Ah, maybe Thomas is unable to unmute. Try now, Thomas. Hello, uh, can you hear me? Sure, yeah. Awesome. Um, well, thank you for the talk. Um, forgive me, it's it's really early in the morning for me, so I'm gonna try to give you a question. But um, so, if I understand at least one part of your talk, it's that Marxism broaches these metaphysical questions and therefore needs philosophical material to uh, resolve some of the questions that it poses internally. Um, and so when Karatani gets to those parts of the question, then Laruel's approach via non-philosophy comes in there. Um, and, and my question is that you're, you're using a very early text from Karatani, and I wonder if his later work, um, say in Trans Critique, where he reads Kant via Marx and vice versa, Marx via Kant, if that is maybe an example of a non-philosophical approach um, using Kant's philosophical material to try and resolve some of Marxism's uh, problems. 
Huh. And if, if that's too far mm -hmm. outside of the scope of your talk, maybe you could just elaborate the, the role of Karatani in what you presented today. Uh, the role of Karatani in what I presented today is a netted uh, uh, reading of what I developed as a thesis without Karatani. So I'm not presenting here as an expert on Karatani. I'm presenting here uh, as somebody who works with Marx via Laruel. Uh, and I have added to that, as I said, uh, in the latest book, but not previously, uh, some, um, uh, uh, some tools, uh, methodological uh, tools uh, from structuralist linguistics as per Saussure. Um, so this is my approach and I have arrived to the conclusions that I present, including the proposal to radicalize the core, uh, the metaphysical core uh, at any scientific inquiry. I argue that any scientific inquiry study is moved by a metaphysical quandary. And I have arrived to that through Marx by way of radicalizing Marx's text with the help of uh, Laurel's method. Uh, what I do here now is uh, uh, by referring to Karatani is uh, establish some um, synchronicity, let's put it that way. Uh, uh, between the two discussions. So I kind of find corroboration in this text from 2000. That's not old for me, I'm sorry. I'm very old, so for me 2000 is not that old. Um, so, um, uh, so yeah, I work with this text only uh, for the purposes of this presentation. I'm not an expert on Karatani and I wouldn't know what uh, the later work entails. So that would be my uh, answer to you. So we're, we're almost out of time. Do we have other comments or questions or maybe Thomas, if you have anything to add? There is one question in the chat box, by the way. Just to add, I didn't mean to imply an age dimension of the question, but thank no, you. No, no, That's no, helpful. It's fine. <laughs> I did it myself. Hiron <laughs> uh, Theoretic is asking. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Uh, I can, uh, uh, you know, say it out loud. Uh, thank you, first of all, for the le your lecture, which was really impressive, as usual. Uh, so, uh, what can you say more specifically about the relations between science and the value of producing values? I mean, uh, in a way, how, you know, these spheres, I mean, values and science reconnect and what they can probably reconstruct by their connection? Yeah, that's my question. Well, the science of how value produces value, if considers, considered as a science of how signification is uh, produced, uh, can be and should be treated in a uh, scientific manner, and uh, I suggested that uh, the the approach to that would be uh, so serious ap approach to linguistics, Turing's approach to efficient uh, mathematics, or you know the, the the basis of computing. You know the the, the this uh, resolution kind of of. Goodell's uh, principles of uncertainty through uh, the formula that uh, treats the entscheidung uh, problem, a problem uh, with uh, the proposal that you know we deal simply with uh, math that is um, efficient uh, that can be computed and that can be built into uh, the the universal machine. So. Uh, these approaches to value production, to signification, even my own study is a study of value production 
of value producing value, or I build on Marx's study, let's put it that way, uh, uh, on value produ uh, reproducing itself, reproducing value. Uh, that approach, uh, the approach of seeking to explain how that operates would be a, a scientific poster of thought that I said at the beginning is something I borrow from Leruel. Whereas uh, being inside of this universe of value producing value and value postulating itself as an ersatz real for uh, value production, so for the process of signification would be uh, um, the principle of philosophical sufficiency taking place itself. So that is philosophy. And that is what we seek to uh, abandon as a stance while not abandoning philosophy altogether, uh, but rather treat it as a material of uh, study as Laurel proposes. So this would be, I, I don't know if, if this was the answer to your question, but this was would be the difference uh, to the approach to the phenomenon, how, so, so the, there is this reality of value producing value, but how we um, approach it, what we seek to understand that uh, there, do with it mm -hmm, is the mm -hmm. difference between the scientific and the philosophical. We have breached the, the time, right? Your lunch. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. So thank uh, you as always. Thank you, Katerina, for uh, for your talk. Thanks, thank you all for the questions. I'm sure there are more questions for Katerina, and she'll be participating in the roundtable. So uh, I would recommend we move it for for that time, so we can have a more, uh, uh, you know, in-depth discussion then.